Hey guys, I'm Wes with Neverboard Gaming. Today we're taking a look at the Metropolis expansion for Islebound. So the Metropolis expansion comes in this nice little tuck box with 46 cards. The cards come shrink wrapped and they're a little bit mixed up at first, but it's not too hard to get them sorted out. So the first thing you're going to want to find are these four rules cards. They give you the really basics on how to play this game, which isn't very complicated. So you're going to shuffle up all the building cards and place them in another deck just above the regular building deck. So you're only going to deal out three of these cards and they're going to be above the three book spots. So you are going to be required to have books before you can buy one of these buildings. The only other requirement is you can only buy as many Metropolis buildings as you have regular buildings. So if you already have one building, you can then buy one Metropolis card. Before you can buy another Metropolis card, you have to buy a second building and so on and so forth. These Metropolis buildings will count towards end of game conditions. Besides the four rule cards and then the 40 Metropolis building cards, you are gonna have two of these trumpet cards. So you're gonna wanna shuffle these into the face up trumpet card deck and they have the same back as the building cards just to help remind you they do come from the expansion. So if you wanna take them out, you can. So the first card is the brag of your food. It's worth a victory point and you get plus one victory point per fish you own to a limit of seven. So that could be a nice way to get some more victory points. There's also brag of your monsters, plus one victory point per serpent that you own, again, to the limit of seven. So it's just a good way to get victory points for the fish and the serpents that you have. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these building cards. The color artwork is a little bit different. They're all orange, and they are all worth one additional victory point, which is noted in the banner next to the name. So the first one we're going to look at is the Cannon Factory. It costs five gold, or during a build action, it costs two wood and two fish, and it gives you plus two victory points when you attack a town. Cooper costs two gold, or one wood during a build action, and your cargo hold has a wood fish limit of 14. Next we have Privateer Lodge. It costs five gold or two boards and a fish, plus one victory point per unused pirate you have at game end. We've got News Printer, nine cost or three boards and four fish, plus two victory points when you complete an event. Next we have Hat Shop, which costs four coins or you could spend two boards and a fish, plus one victory point when you visit Rock Slide. Chowder House costs four, or one board and two fish, plus three victory points if you have the most fish at game end. Zoo costs four, two boards and a fish, plus three victory points if you have the most serpents at game end. Next we have Dance Hall, which costs six coins, or two boards and two fish, plus one initiative when you build. Arena, five cost, two boards and two fish. When you use attack to take a town from a player, you get three victory points. Bookshop costs six coins, or two boards and two fish, plus a fish and a coin if you have the most books during a trumpet. Council Chamber, five cost or two boards and two fish, plus five victory points if you control at least four towns at game end. Lumber Traders, cost six or two boards and three fish, plus two boards when you visit a town in an occupied region. Spy Headquarters, cost six or two boards and three fish. You may use the attack action against blue banner towns. Ooh. University, five cost or two boards and two fish. If you have the most books at game end, it's worth plus five victory points. Prison, cost four or two boards and a fish, plus a victory point and a fish when you gain a building that costs three coins or less. It doesn't specify if you have to build it or buy it, so that's nice. Garden Maze, costs three or a board and a fish, and plus one victory point when you visit Fell's Garden. Monastery, it costs eight or three boards and three fish, plus one book when you build. Mint, 
five coins or two boards and two fish, plus two victory points if you have the most coins during a trumpet. Bandit Hideout. It's three coins or two fish. When you stop in an occupied region, take a coin from one player that has a ship there. Watch House. It costs four or two boards and a fish. Plus one victory point per building you own that costs three coins or less at the end of the game. Shipmaker. It costs five or two boards and two fish. Plus one board and one coin if you have the most books during a trumpet. Naval Academy. It costs four or two boards and a fish. You do not need to exhaust and administrate when you stop in an occupied region. Fish Traders. It costs eight or three boards and two fish, and you get plus two fish when you visit a player's home port, including your own. Beggar's Guild, it costs two or one fish, and you get plus one coin when you visit Rat Nest. These economy cards are going to be killer. Courthouse, which costs five or two boards and two fish, plus three victory points when you use diplomacy to take a town from a player. Outskirts, it costs seven or two boards and three fish, plus one crew member when you build. Bookmaker, it costs four or one board and two fish, and you get plus two victory points if you have the most books during an event, the little trumpet thing. Homestead, it costs five or two boards and two fish, and you take one rest every time you build. Town Square, it costs nine or three boards and four fish, plus two victory points every time you build. Labor's Guild, seven coins or two boards and four fish, plus one victory point and one board when you gain a crew member. Some of these could start stacking up on each other. That would be crazy. Pigeon Trainers, costs eight or three boards and two fish. You get plus one fish and coin when you complete an event. Stone cutters. It costs five or two boards and two fish. Pay one less board when you build. Wood shop. It costs nine or three boards and three fish, and you get plus two coins every time you build. If you can get this early game, that could be huge. Treasury. Five coins and two boards and two fish, plus five victory points if you have at least 15 coins at game end. That sounds hard. Coins are so hard to come by. Painter's Guild. Five victory points or two boards and two fish. And you get plus one coin and fish when you visit Far World. Chocolate Shop. My wife's favorite, obviously. It costs four coins or one board and two fish during a build action. Plus one coin when you visit a player-controlled town that is not your own. Post Office. It costs four coins, or one board and two fish, plus one coin when you complete an event. Fool's Guild, two coins or a board, plus one victory point when you stop in an occupied region. Church, it costs five or two boards and two fish, plus five victory points if you have at least six influence at game end. And last but not least, Smokery, which costs four or one board and two fish, and you gain a fish when a player visits a town you control. Well guys, that was a first look at the Metropolis expansion for Islebound. I cannot wait to get this sleeved up and incorporate it into my game. This is probably an expansion that I won't ever take out of the game. I think it's gonna integrate pretty seamlessly and I don't see any reason why you wouldn't just have it in there all the time. Go ahead and check out the purchase link in the description box down below. I'll put one down there as soon as this game releases for the public. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never be bored. Bow, bow, bow.